Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge. And I'm Ashley Sledge. And let's talk horror. So today, in honor of Stephen King's birthday, happy birthday, Mr. Happy King. Happy birthday, King. Um, we wanted to do both of our top ten favorite Stephen King movies. So these are, can be adapted from shorts or novels that he had. Do you want to start us off? So my number ten is Children of the Corn. And although... It's not as good as I remember it being. Um, I remember it being way scarier and cooler when I was a kid. Um, but it's still nostalgic for me. Um, it scared the shit out of me. I lived next to cornfields. I would literally run past them. Like, that's what this did to me. Um, so I, I still have to add it to my list. Yeah. Um, I'm actually going with Pet Cemetery here. Um, I just want to say all ten of these movies I really love. So this was hard putting them in order. Um, this is just a movie that, to me... Scared me a lot more as a kid, and I still love the movie. I think it's fantastic, but the ones I have above it are just a little bit more impactful to me. But you got to give it up to this movie. Like I said, Victor, one of my favorite characters in all the horror history. One of the saddest moments in all the horror history was Gage. So, uh, yeah, number 10 for me is going to be Pet Cemetery. My number nine is Maximum Overdrive. This movie's hilarious. You have a cameo of Mr. King himself saying, The machine called me an asshole. Honey, come on over here, sugar buns. This machine just called me an asshole. It's funny. It's great. Um, One of my favorite cameos of all time. Again, uh, doesn't age as well now that we have all these electronics. Like, we would be screwed from yeah. right from the beginning. But it's a fun movie. It's a fun watch. Um, you're not going to be bored oh, at all. Oh, you'll never be bored no. watching Maximum Overdrive. Uh, number nine for me is Carrie. Um, this movie, even now when I watch it, it's such a heartbreaking movie. Seeing everything that Sissy Space that goes through in this movie and... Um, you know, it's just one of those movies where you, you, you have to root for her, but she is the bad guy, you know, like, yeah, some of the kids were bullying her, but not all of them. Like if she blew up that whole gym, not all the kids were mean to you. The teacher was definitely not mean to you. So, um, th like I said, it's, it's one of those to me, it's an anti-hero thing. You know, you want to root for her, but if my kid was in that school, fuck her. And it has one of the best jump scares of all time at the end. So, mm -hmm. uh, number nine for me is Carrie. Number eight for me is The Mist. And this would be way higher on my list if this ending wasn't so dark and horrible. Um, the, you've heard it a million times. We fight over this ending all the time. But I just, I hate it. I don't know. I feel like he should have waited. Um, I would have never shot my kid in the face. Hmm. Uh, spoiler alert, he shoots a skin in the face. <laughs> um, but besides that, like, Prior to all that, the monsters are really awesome yeah. and scary. Um, you have the villain, Mrs. Carmody, that you like, someone please shoot her in the face. Yeah. I'd um, rather be stuck in the store with a monster than her. Yeah, well, she is a monster, yeah. um, just in human form. So it, it's a great movie until the ending. Right. Um, my number eight is going to be Stand By Me. Now, there's an argument to whether this is horror or not. Um, I think it absolutely has horror elements. I love the ending scene when you have Kiefer Sutherland and the bullies finding the kid with our group of kids and, um, you know, nobody's taking him. Like, I love that whole sequence. The mm -hmm. leeches, you know, obviously something as a young boy back then that scared the shit out of me. Uh, but overall, this is just one of those coming of age movies that I really love and it's stuck with me my whole life. It's a movie I still watch to this day. So number eight for me is going to be Stand By Me. I remember seeing the the dead kid. That scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. Yeah. He said the, the kid wasn't sleeping. Yeah. The no, kid wasn't sick. He definitely wasn't. The kid was dead. He was dead. And it was, yeah. it was, it was scary. Yeah. My number seven is Carrie. Um, again, this is a movie that... You you you're rooting. I I don't I don't know if she's the villain. Yeah, she killed innocent people, but that's like literally the definition of a villain. I know, but still, they were they were mean to her. Like she had a bad home life. She had a bad school life. Like there was no way of her getting away from it. And you just you feel for her. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and at the end of the day, it's a movie. It is a movie, but it, yeah, it's it's a great movie. Um, Sissy Spacek, she's amazing. She's mm -hmm. beautiful. So. I agree. Uh, number seven for me is The Mist. Um, and I've talked about this before, too. This movie is absolutely fantastic, including the ending, which is great. But it's even better to watch this movie in black and white. And if you own it, you know that they have a black and white cut. Go watch this movie in black and white. It's so good. And like everything Ashley said, I'm not going to talk too much about it. But the monsters, um, our boy Ollie, 
you know, love our boy Ali, one of our favorite side characters in all of horror history. So uh, number seven for me is going to be The Mist. My number six is Dr. Sleep. Um, this is a movie. Shut up. You had Pet Cemetery at like nine or ten. <laughs> so don't even start with me. Um, Dr. Sleep is. Uh, I really I went into this movie not really expecting what we got. Um, I think that Abra is a fantastic um, character in this. I think Rosa Hat is so evil but so like amazing at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just it's a great ride the entire time you're on the you know the edge of your seat, um, and it's it's a really great movie. Yeah, um, number six for me is it and take your choice. You know, 1990, 17, 19. Um, the idea of Pennywise has always been one that's scared me. Uh, obviously, watching this at such a young age, it has a huge impact on you. But, you know, even watching it now as an adult and seeing some of the things that they were able to pull off in the made-for-TV version especially, I think that it's aged really, really well. I love the scene where Georgie winks through the picture. That's one of the scenes that I think has held up really, really well and um, still an icon to this day. So for me, at number six, I'm going to have It. My number five is 1408. Our number five is 1408. Our number five is 1408. I audibly screamed in the theater watching this movie. <laughs> um, scared everybody else in my row. It, it is scary. Um, it has good jump scares. They're not cheap jump scares. Um, it is, it's a great movie. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just a movie that affected me then for being scary, for being uh, sad. Mm -hmm. You know, the heartbreak that comes along with this movie. And this is before we had kids. And you still have that heartbreaking moment. You know, you can't yeah. take her twice. Oh, you can't take her twice. <laughs> you can't. Um, either, either ending is, is really... Both hard. endings are sad. Are, yeah, they really Great are. Great endings, but sad. And then this is one of my favorite, up there with As Above, So Below, one of my favorite interpretations of Dante's Inferno. So got to give some love to 1408. Yeah. Um, number four for me is Creep Show. No? Okay. No, have the same? Okay. Oh. Um, yeah, this, and I love this movie, um, all the different segments in it. It's just, it's really great. Um, yeah. I can hold my breath for a long time. Yep. Oh, you do. You have a shirt on. <laughs> yes. That's That's probably my favorite one in, oh. in it. Um, yeah. Absolutely. I can hold my breath for a long time. <laughs> uh, number four for me is The Shining. Um, this is a movie that it's influenced so many different people and uh, the influence it's had is still there today. I could show you the scene of, you know, Danny riding the tricycle and you can hear it, you know, um, the Grady twins. There's so much about this movie that is just so impactful and still so this holds, like I said, it holds up today. Mm -hmm. So The Shining is a movie that I would have to have on the list, and it just missed the top three at number four. So it actually it did get my number three. My number three is The Shining. This movie, it scared me as a kid. Um, the twins, the lady in the bathtub, um, and it still holds up so well today when you put it on. Um, it's just this great, like, isolation mm -hmm. type movie. Um, you're stuck up in this hotel by yourself in the middle of winter. Um, and it's, it, it, there's a lot of trauma behind it, and it, it's a great movie. It definitely is a, a, a good retelling of addiction. Yeah. Um, yeah uh, number three for me is Creepshow. So we just flip-flopped those ones. Yeah, we did. Um, and I agree with you. Every segment in this is great. Even Jordy Barrow, just because Stephen King is so over the it's, top. He's hilarious in it, yeah. Uh, but this is just a movie that um, has been super important to me for a very long time. It's, I think, where my love for anthology started was with Creepshow and Creepshow 2. Creepshow 2 could have been on the list, but I didn't want to put that one on here, too. But you could call this one Creepshow and Creepshow 2. But mm -hmm. I just, I absolutely adore this movie, and it's a movie that we still watch every year on Father's Day. Where's my king? You promised me my king. Amelia, I am your father. Mm -hmm. So that's how important this movie is to me. So number three for me is Creepshow. My number two is where it all started, and I, I know you guys probably know this by now, but Pet Cemetery, um, it's the reason I love horror. Mm -hmm. um, it's the reason I feel like I am this horror lover that I am today, and it's because of Pet Cemetery. Zelda, she scared me, gave me nightmares. Um, Victor, he also was scary. Um, it's just, 
it's great. Like you said, it's got heartbreak. It's got scares. Um, a little bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, number two for me is Dr. Sleep. I know, Dr. Sleep Above the Shining. This is my favorite sequel of all time, guys. Like, I love this movie. Like Ash was saying about Rose the Hat. Holy shit, what a villain. Abra, what an amazing final girl. And even Danny, you know, the getting what we get out of him throughout this whole movie, you know, starting from letting that kid die in his hotel room or apartment, and then, you know, seeing him come full circle to do what he does to save Abra. Um, it's just, it's, it's an amazing retelling of the novel. And of course, Mike Flanagan did it and mm-hmm. absolutely nailed it. A criminally underrated movie. Uh, the baseball boy scene, one oh. of the hardest scenes to watch. So mm-hmm. absolutely love Dr. Sleep. It's my number two. My number one is it. Um, Pennywise, it's, it, again, e- either adaption of them yeah. um, are great. Um, but it's it's fun. You have this scary clown that's killing people. You, you have this nostalgic of the kids and then yeah. them growing up. And it's just... Coming it, back together. Yeah, them coming back together once they're, you know, older. And it's just, it's a great time. And I was so excited um, when we got the the remake of it. I mean, if I had to choose, 2019 is my favorite. I know yeah. that's a huge hot take, but that's my favorite of the bunch. And I agree with you. It's just such a great telling of being a kid and growing up. And uh, my number one isn't even on Ashley's list. And that is Sometimes They Come Back. Um, absolutely my favorite Stephen King adaption. And this is one that I would, I think is just primed for a remake. Uh, it was a made-for-TV movie, and it was still amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, this movie is so important to me. I absolutely adore this movie. You know, Run, Jimmy, Run. Run, Jimmy, run! Run, Jimmy, run! That moment is so scary to me. Uh, there's just so much about this story that could be told theatrically now with a good budget. And I think it would blow people away. Mm -hmm. And the short story is absolutely fantastic as well. So um, we want to once again say happy birthday, Mr. King. Um, Thank you for all the great memories you've given us throughout our childhood. Even into today, you're still out there kicking ass. And we thank you because we wouldn't be the people that we are today without you. So let us know down in the comments, guys. What are your favorite Stephen King adaptions? Which ones did we miss? Which ones do you disagree on? So we always appreciate you guys watching. And until next time... Keep talking horror. Say who you are. And we'll see you guys soon. Bye, guys.